Welcome once again to Business Life. And in today's summary, Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Elsie Ado Awaji, warned banks to abide by the rules of face punishment. And on the international front, Chinese smartphone maker Huawei has sold around 40, 54 million phones last quarter to beat Apple smartphone for the first time ever. We have the summaries next. The second deputy governor of the Bank of Ghana, Elsie Adu Awaji, has warned that banks who do not abide by the rules of the central bank will be penalized to the full extent of the law. Her warning comes on the heels of announcements on Wednesday that five financial institutions, that is Construction Bank, the Royal Bank, Unibank, Beige Bank and Sovereign Bank, have been merged to form Consolidated Bank of Ghana Limited. The Bank of Ghana's decision to combine the banks was based on investigations, finding several more practices, including misapplication of funds. She says the development's best testimony to the fact that it's a new day and the Bank of Ghana is poised on building a new culture of integrity and trust within the banking sector. An economist and policy director at the Trades Union Congress, Dr. Kwabna Nyako Otu, says he does not want the issues of criminality to be glossed over in the assessment of the recent collapse of five local banks. Three of the banks, under the Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited by the Bank of Ghana, that is Sovereign Bank, Beige Bank and Construction Bank, are said to have obtained their banking license by false pretense. Dr. Nyako indicated that there are criminal issues to be answered regarding those licensed under false pretense. Huawei has beat Apple in smartphone sales for the first time. The Chinese smartphone maker Huawei has sold about 54 million phones last quarter, up more than 40% compared to the same period last year. This is according to research firms IDC, Canalys and IHS Markets. That was not enough to only beat Apple, but also narrowed a gap with markets leader Samsung. Samsung sold more than 70 million phones last quarter, down about 10% from the same time last year. Huawei has now leaped into second place despite being virtually locked out of the world's biggest economy. The Bank of England has raised the interest rates for only the second time in a decade. The rate has risen by a quarter of a percentage point from 0.5% to 0.75%, the highest level since March 2009. The move will increase interest rates of more than 3.5 million residential mortgages that have variable or tracker rates. But it will be welcomed by savers who could see a lift in their interest rates over the coming months. Right, so those were the latest news summaries uh, from Ghana and around the world. I just want to update you on some other story we are picking up tonight, uh, that Apple has become the world's first public company to be worth $1 trillion. Yes, you heard right. The iPhone maker's market value reached a figure uh, late morning that is in the U.S. New York as its shares rose to a new record high of above 200 and seven dollars as we've been telling you tonight we are going to be following all the developments within the banking sector but we just want to sum it all up for you in this infograph you're going to see next
Welcome back and you're still watching Business Life and we're still talking about the banking sector and all the happenings. So uh, with the establishment of a new bank, Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited, all signs may point to the fact that these financial institutions may have the financial muzzle needed to make out big loans and also support big ticket transactions. But how can we actually gauge the potential size of this new bank and uh, from the transfer to deposit and then now the non-existence of the five banks and so we've been asking uh, with all these things happening what is the strength of this bank do they have what it takes to be able to lend to the public and also who should actually be paying um, for the mess that is being created should it be the private the taxpayer or the private shareholder and philip namfuri joins me for the discussion philip um it's been a long day. Yeah, Yesterday yeah. was a big day. Yeah. And so give us a sense of the strength of the consolidated okay. bank itself. So let me start off from the branches. Mm. Looking at what has happened, the five banks that have been subsumed under consolidated bank Ghana. When I did a, a little sketch, you realize that it has a total of, as of now, 148 branches. Mm. So that's branches of sovereign, branches of construction or a, a branch of construction, mm -hmm. Unibank's branches, Royal Bank's branches, and Beige's branches. So all of these have been put together. But you know that some of these branches might be within the same space. We are saying it's early days yet, but as time goes on, maybe you can see some moves to either close some of the branches because you can't have a number of branches operating in the same space. Mm. It's financially irresponsible in terms of the fact that it's going to be a cost to you. If mm -hmm. that branch can take care of the needs of all the customers, then why not? You know, Ecobank like this, they have a branch in, for example, if you look at University of Ghana campus, they have one branch there. You come out of the school, open go traffic light, there's another branch there. You drive down into East Legon, there's one, two there. Mm -hmm. Maybe they might see that they have so many customers that they need these three branches to serve mm -hmm. them. But as time goes on, as I said, it's early days yet. Yeah, don't let us look, forget the fact that these are five banks that have been put together. Exactly. So in terms of employees, how many are we looking at okay. if you put so, all these five banks um, together? Um, it crossed, uh, for my little calculations, it crossed a figure of 2,000. Let me just put it there. I don't want to give an exact figure. Mm. It crossed a figure of 2,000. And again, like the Bank of Ghana said, the shareholders and the board of all these banks, they play no role any longer. So mm. it's the staff of these banks. So getting the exact numbers, I won't give, but it goes beyond 2,000. That's and quite a huge number. It's quite a huge and number, but... It's always an issue of whether we are going to lose some workers or not. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, with the UT Bank Capital Bank issue, when it happened, there were some assurances that jobs will not be lost. But as time went on, we saw that, yes, indeed, some jobs were lost. Some people were laid off, and there were issues of they didn't get their severance packages and a whole number of things. So... Yes, on the surface of it right now, you can say that it's big in terms of branches mm. and staff. But as time goes on, we're not saying anything, but we should just keep our eyes peeled on that situation. Mm. Philip, so how about the decision to issue, the, the debt issue? Because the Bank bond. of Ghana yes. is going to issue about 5.76 billion bonds just a quick, to be able to clear the yeah, market. Who's supposed it's, to pay? Okay. It's, not, it's not the Bank of Ghana that's going to issue. It's the government of Ghana. The government of Ghana, going to okay. issue this 5.76 billion bond and it's going to take care of the negatives the mm -hmm. bad sides of this transaction the subsuming of these five banks under consolidated bank ghana so some media argument that it shouldn't be you and i sandra that yeah because be who, who is government say they were you and i government because is you and I, the, but the taxpayer is going to yes pay but then these money. are private these were or are private run institutions mm -hmm. private shareholders and there's a blog I read uh, from the IMF. The IMF sends out these blogs, you subscribe to it. And then it was talking about how we should deal with failed banks. And it was making an argument for a balance between allowing private investors to take some of the losses, mm. whereas governments, or what we call bailouts, anytime a government comes to the rescue of an institution, it's termed as a bailout. Mm. We should draw a fine line between those two. But with the bail-in, that's where the private investors take it. It's, 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 it's going to cause creditors and depositors to take a haircut. And a and haircut, I mean, you would absorb some of the losses of the bank. But right now, as it is, what they've done, government of Ghana, that's you and I, taxpayers, have taken this debt. Is so, that fair at all that um, I mean, some private investor goes out there and all this, um, let me use my words carefully, mess is created 
and we saw the findings that came out, some of the, the things that happened in some of these banks, and then the taxpayer is going to pay all this money. How do we deal with this going forward? What are some of the things we should be doing to be able to protect the taxpayer? Okay, so uh, it's, it's, it's open up for debate. Some would argue that yes, in order not to uh, have a contagion effect, where if we leave one bank to go down and allow a shareholder to take it, it might affect the other, mm -hmm. and we have the domino or cascading effect where one goes down and then all the others follow. So sometimes governments all over the world, jurisdictions, mm -hmm. and it happened in America, 2008, United States, mm -hmm. where the government stepped in and over a trillion dollars was used to bail out the big banks, you understand, on Wall Street. So some will say, yes, we shouldn't be paying for it. But if they feel that this is the best way to prevent um, certain risks from spreading within the financial sector and mm. affecting you and I because mm. maybe our bank may not be affected but due to the fact that they trade amongst themselves and other stuff maybe panic withdrawals everybody starts running around so they do this in order to save the situation so moving forward what should be the role of Bank of Ghana yes they have admitted that there were certain um, things they overlooked especially when um, three of these five banks actually um, acquired their licenses through the false, false pretenses. Yeah. How was that even in the first place? And moving forward, how do we ensure that we don't have a repetition of what happened? Okay, so it's very simple. The Bank of Ghana needs to be strong in this supervisory role. Mm -hmm. And the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Addison, has alluded to this time and time again, that they are going to really go hard. This morning, the Super Morning Show, we spoke to the second deputy governor, Madam L.C. Awaji, mm. and she reiterated the same point. They're going to go very hard. Also, that's from the regulator's perspective. Mm. Also, the banks should start going for it, start taking their own set of actions to ensure that they are complying with rules and regulations. So it goes both ways. Mm. It goes Thank both you very ways. much, you. Philip Namfuri. That was our in-house analyst, Philip Namfuri, updating us on all the happenings on the banking sector. I will take a short break. When we come back, Business Live continues. Welcome back uh, to Business Live. At 1 p.m. today, the Consolidated Bank opened to public business. Um, Eben Sabote was a man on the ground. He's in studio with me uh, today to talk about the experiences on the ground. Remember that this is not the first time uh, we've had the Bank of Ghana make an announcement, put a bank under administration or collapse certain banks. And so uh, it was quite a different experience today. And I'll just let Eben Sabote Lead us to what he saw today, Eben. Hi, Daryl. Uh, so as you were saying, yes, this is not the first time, but this time around it has been very different. Unlike UT Capital Bank, mm -hmm. where the Bank of Ghana revoked their license and asked a, another bank to take over. This time around, it's not so. In that, uh, during those days, you could see customers rushing in to get their money because they don't trust the other bank. This time around, customers were nowhere to be found. As at the time, I got there. Today, I was at almost all the banks. I can tell you, I went to construction bank. Tell us which bank. of the branches you, you visited. So I went to construction bank, their head office at the Octagon. You know, the Octagon building houses about five or six banks, and out of these two were the affected banks, the Sovereign Bank and the Construction Bank. Over these two banks, I mean, when I went, business was as usual. The cleaners were going about their duties and mm. all that. Just that the place wasn't open, as in the banking hall wasn't open for business. Then I move on to, uh, what do you call it? Unibank, their head office at the World Trade Center, which is very close, and the same situation over there. So from there, I moved towards the Shashi area to Royal Bank head office. And there, I can see the staff coming in, walking in, walking out, just like that. Just that I tried using the ATM, and I was told that the machine is out of use. I came back to ask one of the staff what is happening, and it was like, okay, they said the bank will be open for business at one. So as at the time, the bank was not operating, even though the staff have access to the place and all that. But if you are a customer and you want to do business, that's at the time, you will not be able to do business. And, and, and we've seen the Bank of Ghana try very hard to manage uh, all of this. And so did you get the sense from uh, the customers that they were satisfied with all that was going on? Were, were they panicky? Yeah, I, I think this time around, the Bank of Ghana did very well, uh, if you ask me, because they sent messages to customers as at yesterday. Mm. I mean, the, the various banks sent messages to some customers, I mean, almost all the customers as at yesterday. So before waking up, you know the situation on the ground. Unlike the previous ones where you'll be there and then few, I mean, hours right, after even. business 
hours before they will send you a message. So this time around, customers were a bit okay. You and know, a quick one, uh, you tell us that the Bank of Ghana officials and officials <laughs> of the KPMG were also around it, to it, sort of uh, inspect all that was going on. Yeah. Did we hear anything uh, from uh, them? Uh, exactly. So when I got to the Beige Bank office at uh, Airport City, I saw some officials from KPMG and then the Bank of Ghana, while the Deputy MD Charles Odonko was taking them around the place and they were assuring some of their customers that their funds are safe. They are going to make right. sure that whatever it is, they should still save with Consolidated Bank and their funds are safe. So yes, they've been going around with them, mm. assuring some customers of the bank and all that. Even Sabute, I appreciate all the hard work today. Uh, let's take you now. I mean, he was talking about the situation here in Accra, but how about the Ashanti region? Well, we have this report for you from Kumasi. Here in Kumase, only three of the five consolidated banks have branches here. Beige, the Royal Bank, and Unibank. For sovereign and construction banks, they have no branches here, so the impact was not felt. But for these three other banks since morning, a lot of customers trip to the banks to transact business, but we are unable to do that because all the banks were locked up. I don't know, I don't know. I didn't get any um, person to explain anything to me. Uh, no, no, no. If I didn't get any bank to sort me out, I have to wait for until the one o'clock. I to take some money. The phone I came, to shut up. And I don't know. Well, in any case, it's, uh, it's positive to me because I'm owing somebody and I'm supposed to come and deposit that money. I don't have any problem. I don't have any problem. So, so me, it's a plus to me. And they were all told that 1 p.m. the banks will be open for business. Some of the banks, just in front of them, you see the inscriptions boldly written on them that a new management has taken over uh, the bank. Others also have the Bank of Ghana directive of the uh, new directive all pasted in front of the banks. Here at Unibank, for instance, the officials came out to speak to the um, customers who had converged here to transact business and were unable to do that. So at 1 p.m., the bank was open and business has started and the, the customers we spoke All right, so that was the situation there in uh, Kumase. Uh, Sandy joins me in studio as we uh, look at this next story, the fact that the Bank of Ghana mm. is giving indication that it is prepared to submit the names of the directors of the five banks. Mm. They've uh, actually admitted that it was their fault and they are ready to submit the names for any investigations to be carried on. Let's okay, have we story. have this next story for you. The head of banking supervision of the Bank of Ghana, Osei JC, tells Joy Business they have done the necessary investigations and it is up to the security agencies to act on their findings. As far as the regulator is concerned, uh, the issues have been brought up and the, we have the evidence, the reports are there and it is for the appropriate state agencies to take up the matter and based on the reports and the evidence we'll give to them. Would you submit to them officially? Yeah, if, it is, if, if, if the request is made to the regulator and management deems it fits, uh, the central bank is not above the law. Mr. Jesse has also been justifying the decision to revoke the licenses of these banks, rejecting arguments that it was a political move. It's not true because uh, these are uh, banks that uh, continue to knock at the door of the central bank for liquidity support. Uh, these are banks that we realize they are solvency uh, positions. We're deteriorating on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a, on a monthly basis. So we had no choice. It's, it's, the longer we stayed, the, the, the more expensive it was going to be uh, for the taxpayer. And, and it had, like I said, financial stability implications. On what would happen to the directors of the defunct banks? All right. And I'm sure that in the coming days, there will still be more to talk about. Of, and people are 
asking questions. Yes, Why exactly. did the Bank of Ghana allow and this to take place? And especially the safety and then uh, assurance for those working with these banks. Mm. We saw what happened with the UT case as well. We'll be bringing all those stories in our subsequent bulletins. But we have to wrap up today on Business Live. My name is Daryl Kwao. My name is Sandra Esenamath and we'll see you tomorrow on Business Live.